Awesome. Yeah, we'll give everybody a couple. Hey, minutes. everyone. Welcome. We yeah. are just waiting a few more minutes no, for everyone to kind of join in. If you'd like um, to say hi, hi, place your name, where um, you're from, um, go ahead and place that on the chat. And we'll kind of do some housekeeping here in the next um, five minutes before we get started. Thank you for joining us.
Hey everyone. Welcome as y'all come in, please feel free to introduce yourselves, place where you're from, say good morning. Thank you for joining us. We'll get ready in the next minute or so. Just let just um, having people join us. So um, we're just gonna slightly go over some housekeeping rules. Um, first, I do want to thank um, Neil Johnson and Ms. Kristen Hamm um, for joining us today and, and doing a, a workshop for us for NUSA. Um, I just want to, uh, my name is Brenda Pinner, so if you have any questions, I'm with the community engagement team um, helping host all of this information. I know it's a lot of information that when you get started, so hopefully you're kind of getting the hang of it, but um, just to make sure if you are here for the first day, on the right hand side of your screen, you'll see the little pop ups and that's the chat. Please use that if you wish. Um, you don't have to use any of these, but just know that, you know, if you're just here to listen, um, that's completely fine too. Right below it, it looks like a person with the square behind them. And that is where you can ask questions. Um, Kirsten and Neil will be. Um, kind of responding to you back and forth there. You can also place them in the chat, but it's easier if you put them in the question. In the next, if they have a poll, um, that's where you'll be able to do that. If there's not a poll, that's okay. Um, Neil and Kirsten, if you want to do any feedback as far as getting people to talk with you, the very last one is, um, it shows people that are in here. And if they raise their hand, you can just ask them and you will be allowed to um, speak and be come on screen. Um, please note that you're not able to um, see your faces or anything like that. So if you're like waving or have your hands up, I'm sorry, we can't see you. Okay. Unless you're a speaker. So I do want to introduce y'all and welcome y'all to the first workshop of um, this Thursday. So at 9.45, it should be till 11 a.m. Neil Johnson and Kirsten Hamm will have something for you and I'll let them introduce themselves. So I'll promise I'll stop talking soon. Um, they're doing Employing the Homeless for the Beautification of Our City and Neighborhoods. So um, Neil and Kirsten, if y'all wanna introduce yourselves before I start the video, um, there will be a video and then there'll be some um, kind of conversational pieces after. Take it away. Well, hello everyone. I'll start it out. My name is Neil Johnson. I'm happy to be here. I am actually a district superintendent for the city of Fort Worth. I'm in code compliance, our solid waste division. And I'm I'm actually superintendent over our, our litter abatement, uh, litter abatement, uh, illegal dumping, um, and also our our drop-off stations, our waste drop-off stations here with the city of Fort Worth. So, and work closely together with Kirsten Ham, uh, who will be introducing herself. So I thank you for joining us. Hopefully you get a lot out of this. Um, and feel free to ask questions. Uh, we'll be happy to, to, to help out any way possible. Uh, um, and again, thank you. Hey y'all, I'm Kirsten. Um, I'm with Presbyterian Night Shelter and I oversee the Upspire program. Um, so I, I've started it about five years ago now, um, and we do litter, landscaping, staffing, and janitorial specifically in this presentation. We'll be talking about our litter program um, and our awesome partnership with the city of Fort Worth. So we look forward to spending the next hour or so with you. Feel free to ask questions during the presentation. Neil and I will respond, um, and then we can have some Q&A after. You're all set. All right, thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Neil Johnson. I am the district superintendent for the city of Fort Worth's uh, Code Compliance Solid Waste Division. And I, I manage uh, our, our city's litter abatement crews is in charge of the litter collection throughout the city of Fort Worth and also illegal dump operations. And also one of the district superintendents for our four uh, waste drop-off stations. Uh, here with the city of Fort Worth. And I'm happy to have uh, Kirsten Ham here as one of my co-presenters um, here. Kirsten, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Kirsten. Um, I'm the Vice President of Workforce and Career Development at Presbyterian Night Shelter and I oversee the Upspire program. I'm happy to be here today. Thank you so much, Kirsten. And everyone, I'm, uh, we're 
we're here uh, and very excited uh, and proud to be talking about something that we feel very, feel very passionate about, and that's our partnership, the City of Fort Worth's partnership with Upspire. Um, um, and our quest for for uh, a cleaner city, and this 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 uh, this partnership is key not only for the success of our our city's fight against litter, um, but also assisting homeless in the path of employment to employment, and also permanent housing. Um, with this partnership um, goes to what we're presenting on, and that's employing the homeless for the beautification of our city and our neighborhood. And that's our partnership with the city of Fort Worth and also Upspire and Kirsten's group. First, I want to look at is our partnership goals. Um, as you see right here in the right hand corner, apologize for the distortion of the picture, but this is actually a banner uh, that's actually placed on, if you look at the bottom picture there, on the Upspire Litter Cruise trailer. Um, and it, it, it's really, it's, it, it's really, it really shows exactly what our goals are with this partnership. It says partnering together for a litter-free Fort Worth. And it shows the Upspire logo with the city of Fort Worth. And as you can see there, it's a beautiful truck here. It's wrapped with the Upspire and also having that banner with this crew, the litter crew, which is three of the five, uh, showing the pride in what they, they do and also, and also the, it acknowledges that they're not only working on the behalf of Upspire, but they're working on the behalf of the city of Fort Worth uh, in partnership with us in that fight against litter. Um, and also one of our main, main goals with the city of Fort Worth is a litter-free city. Um, uh, if you're not familiar with the city of Fort Worth, it's very, it's very large. Um, we cover approximately 30, 350 square miles or more of city. We have over 900,000 residents. I think we're pushing closer to a million at this time and also ranked the, the 13th largest city in the U.S. So, so we have quite a bit of uh, ground to cover and a lot of, of uh, residents to, to, to really uh, tend to. Um, and the quest for a litter-free city is, is something that we feel very strongly about. And with this partnership with Upspire, and the inclusion of those groups, uh, that that crew, those crews that assist us in helping, is very imperative to that, to us accomplishing that. Uh, the next partnership goal is is the beautification and revitalization of our neighborhoods. Uh, with over 900,000 residents, we have quite a, quite a uh, quite a few neighborhoods and many customers uh, throughout the city, and we want to really make sure that they we're available for, for them for any requests. Uh, to, to ensure that their neighborhoods are clean, that they're proud to be a Fort Worth residents. And with the, the inclusion of Upspire litter crews on top of our internal litter crews, we're able to proactively go into those neighborhoods and ensure that we, we're, we're, we're actively participating in cleaning up their areas, addressing their concerns if they have uh, accumulation of litter going into their neighborhoods and out that they can actually proudly go into their neighborhoods and see that it's clean and also encourage participation with, with those residents, with our residents. So um, they're, very, they're, they're very active in those neighborhoods and very well seen. Also what is great uh, with the city of Fort Worth, we take pride in customer service and responding to the request of our, our, our residents. And we presently employ internal litter crews, but we're, with 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 a smaller staff, we we really uh, we really uh, I guess it's it's great to have uh, that additional that additional the additional crews that Upspire has to respond to customer service requests. Um, we get those in daily, um, and we try to respond to those requests within seventy two hours. And with the addition of P uh, or Upspire litter crews, we're able to respond to those requests. And, and majority of time, the majority of time of 24 hours. Uh, so, so that, that aids in, uh, in having great customer service, which is our mission here with the city of Fort Worth and also happy residents. Um, next would be employment, which is very important, the employment of individuals struggling with homelessness. Kirsten will elaborate on this uh, in much more detail and, and their success with this. 
and we're happy to be a part of that. They, they, uh, I'm actually, uh, I've actually been a part of this from the start and seeing the success uh, of individuals being employed, seeing the success, success of this, uh, of them being employed and actually transitioning into permanent housing is great in the pride that they have with, uh, in their jobs. So we're, we're happy to be a part of that, that partnership. Um, as I said before, it's a transition into homeless, uh, from homeless to permanent housing. And also what's great about this, is the job training and career growth. Uh, Kirsten and their group has done an excellent job, not only with the city of Fort Worth, but outside, outside the city of Fort Worth of providing career and job opportunities with, with their, their employees and also our litter crews. We've been happy to, to assist in that with them working with our guys with uh, the litter abatement and also providing any type of assistance and career growth if possible. We also have a program with them that they're employed with, with Upspire for a year and have a great service record. They're actually guaranteed the opportunity to, to, to interview for some of our positions as maintenance workers and, and, and so forth within, within the city. And we've been successful at hiring uh, one recently within parks, uh, parks and Rec uh, recreation department. So this is something that we really take pride in and in this partnership. And I, and I look forward to not only, you know, I'm proud of the success we've had, and I really look forward to what we plan to do in the future. Next, I wanna go into how our partnership began. I really wanted to kind of get a basis of our success and what we've been doing recently, but I wanna kind of go back to the beginning of how this started. Um, basically, within the city of Fort Worth, we have actually, we have internal litter crews that serve the city in multiple capacities, which is litter abatement. Um, that internal crew, which is a limited staff, is in charge of pretty much the litter cleanup or collection throughout the whole city of Fort Worth. That can, that task can be daunting with, with just the limited staff that we have. We're also responsible for nuisance abatement cases of public property and in, in private properties throughout the city. So if enforcement finds a complaint with, with a nuisance within, within the city, such as uh, high litter accumulation, um, uh, uh, excess debris on properties, um, private property, we leave it up to the owner to, we try to get the owner to clean it, to clean the property. But if they don't, the, the responsibility falls upon our litter crews to actually uh, clean this and, and, and build the property on. That also includes the public property, so we'd have to abate. So that becomes pretty pretty daunting for the, for the existing staff. So uh, one of the areas in which we were having problems with was if you look on this right side here, this is actually an area east of our downtown, downtown Fort Worth. So just west of this highlighted area would be the, our downtown area. So for, for residents or, or people coming into the downtown area throughout our, this interstate here, this would be the main corridor leading, in, le leading into our downtown area. So we began having accumulation of litter throughout this area, which is actually an area where we have a lot of homeless outreach groups, um, which is great. Um, and we have, which causes the influx of the homeless within this certain area. Uh, because of the resources that they have. Um, unfortunately, with, within this area, the abundance of, of homeless individuals within the area, uh, and it, it, it started to get a lot of accumulation of litter and debris, uh, and it became very visible within that area. So rather than exhausting the resources we have internally, uh, the city of Fort Worth sought out um, uh, PNS, which, uh, which is Upspire at this time, to test a program to hire nonprofit contractors instead of for profit. So we, we, we offered, well, we, we spoke with Presbyterian Night Shelter, which is Kirsten's group, with its, which is Upspire, to provide us with a, a crew, a uh, litter crew that would actually service this area twice a day. 10 hours a day, seven days a week. This would give them ownership within this area. Also, we're killing two birds in one stone. I hope I can say that, but, uh, but it's actually true. 
We're employing the homeless. We're actually giving them charge and accountability of an area in which, you know, we're having high litter problems. And, and it's, uh, you know, it, 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 it's ongoing. It's, it's, it's actually successful till this day. Uh, it resulted in a collection of over 3,000 cubic yards of trash um, for the first 15 months, and we're continuing on and on today. So, so it, it's been a, a, a great success. Um, so with that success, we, we're proud to say that uh, with that success, we began a progression or advancement of that partnership. Um, into the citywide cleanup groups and also neighborhood improvement projects. Um, so in 2017, uh, we expanded our contract, not only to that Lancaster area, which is east of Fort Worth, we, we sought after a contract with Upspire to provide us with a citywide litter crew that would permanently assist our internal, our internal teams to address the litter concerns throughout our city. So we were successful at securing a contract of five full-time individuals um, uh, with truck, uh, truck and trailer that work directly with our internal groups to address, first of all, daily litter collection, uh, the cleaning of vacant lots throughout our city, which is, which is pretty prevalent, um, illegal dump removals, which they become pretty instrumental in. Uh, just to elaborate on that, we have illegal dump crews, which they have huge trucks with boom trucks that go out to all these different areas to tackle uh, big illegal dump areas uh, throughout the city. Sometimes those are smaller. So we enlist uh, that citywide crew to go out and actually tackle the smaller, smaller illegal dumps, which leaves our resources for the larger equipment to larger jobs. Also dump tire collection. Uh, they've been very instrumental in that, uh, which has been, a, been an issue within the city of Fort Worth. So that influx of that one citywide litter crew uh, to, to help us out has been very, very, very instrumental, not only in that, and also taking care of the needs of our customers and residents throughout the city of Fort Worth. Next, um, we, we moved forward from the citywide litter crews into neighbor, neighborhood improvement projects. Um, just a little insight on our neighborhood improvement projects. Each year, the city of Fort Worth selects a neighborhood, one neighborhood throughout within the city of Fort Worth. And there's a list of criteria that they use to select that neighborhood. Um, we, in our proposal, we, we propose that we have one uh, litter contractor, which we selected uh, Upspire for this, uh, to contribute to the significant reduction of litter and illegal dumping in those neighborhood projects. We, when they, they, they've been successful, we've been successful in actually employing them for three neighborhood improvement projects that for the city of Fort Worth. Now we're actually just starting the fourth. Uh, neighborhood impro improvement project. And that's based on the success that those litter crews has had in the past projects. Um, um, and within those projects, the Upspire litter crews has contributed to the removal of 200, 230 tons of litter and debris collectively from those three neighborhood projects. We also had one, not this last project, but the project before that, where the, the residents actually recommended or the acts for the planting of trees. So we were actually able to use the, the Upspire group with Kristen's permission and they actually really enjoyed it working with our forestry group and planting of 89 trees within that, that neighborhood improvement project. So it's been very instrumental. Uh, I just want to touch on just if you look on to the side these two pictures here, it's just an example of some of the illegal dumping that happens in these neighborhoods. This is, this is, these are actual pictures. So if we look at some of the, the improvement projects from beginning to end, there's a significant difference. Also to kind of include on that, the presence of those workers in their five full-time staff in their Monday through Friday with that banner 
and those residents seeing them on a day-to-day -day basis and seeing the impact that they make on their, those communities and knowing them face-to-face -face and seeing them every day has really made a huge difference in those neighborhoods. And we're actually still going back to those neighborhoods today to sustain what we've started. Uh, they've been very well received, uh, complimented, and it's been very, it's been very successful. Um, just, just an example of uh, just a two-year uh, summary of what what we've accomplished here. Um, in 2019, we've got over 5,000 lane miles of coverage with with these P with PNS crews. Uh, and over 600,000, over 680,000 pounds of waste collected. 2020, almost uh, close to 5,000 lane miles. And we've almost, I mean, it's quite a significant increase in waste collected due to their additional responsibilities for the legal dumping, which I discussed earlier. So we've kind of increased their capacity. Uh, so that shows in the increase of waste, collect waste collected. So this really gives you a good idea of the impact that, that these crews have made and, and the, the overall cleanliness of our city. This picture to the side gives you a good idea of, of some of the right-of-ways that they're actually covering. So they do this pretty much all day. We make sure those areas are clean and we actually proactively clean those areas that are high litter areas in which we don't wait for complaints we actually send them out there to ensure that it continues to stay clean. So some of our successes with, with this program, um, as I said before, instead of being reactive, which we were with the small limited staff that we had, we had prior to Upspire, we we're actually be able to, to be proactive in, our, in the cleaning of these areas um, with greater litter accumulation throughout the city. Um, uh, we were able to complete uh, litter requests that come into us daily in a timely manner. We generally have a targeted response time of 72 hours, as I said before. With these litter crews available, we're able to receive those requests, send out an Upspire litter crew to, to respond to those requests within a 24 hour period of time. And not only that, we're decreasing, decreasing our complaints because we're actually able to, to put the high litter areas on a schedule. So if we had one area that we received a lot of complaints, we put that area on a, on a frequent schedule and it stayed clean and we, we weren't getting any more complaints from that area. And that's worked out citywide. Uh, so we decreased complaints. Also, we discouraged littering. It's been a proven fact, if you have a clean area, people are most likely not to, to litter in those areas. Um, it's, it's just, a, just a, you know, a normal occurrence. So if we keep those areas clean, it kind of discourages litter. And on top of that, uh, what we really want is happy citizens and customer satisfaction in a cleaner city. And, and we're, really, we're really progressing on that with, with our partnership with, with Upspy. On top of that, with all the success we've had in our continuous progression with our partnership with Upspire, with the Lancaster area near downtown and the success of that program, to go back to the, 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 uh, the acquiring of the citywide crews to help us out throughout the city, the neighborhood improvement uh, projects, those crews that are, that are planning in those, those areas, We've also, Kirsten has been successful in, in encouraging donor-sponsored programs. Uh, she will expound on this a great deal more later on, but I just really wanted to touch on this uh, right quick. She was actually approached by a couple uh, who wanted to remain nameless to sponsor a crew that they, that they felt very passionate about. They're very outdoor people, they love parks, they love waterways, they, 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 and they saw a problem that was there. Uh, in the areas in which they frequently uh, spent time, which is litter accumulation in those parks, litter accumulation in the watersheds and the waterways, and it really disturbed them. So they wanted to take action instead of 
instead of sitting back in Washington and complaining, they wanted to take action. So they reached out to Kirsten to say, what can we do? We want to, we want to make a difference, employ people, and also, and also make sure these areas are addressed. So Kirsten said, well, I'll, I'll get back with you. She reached out to me, and this is more of kind of like an environmental issue also. So I work together with environmental to select some sites, and, and I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but basically, basically um, we identified areas. Six areas were identified within the city of Fort Worth, which were consisted of parks, also lo local waterways and watersheds that, that, that were frequently uh, used by the city of Fort Worth residents. Um, I told Kirsten if she can provide the staff, I'll provide the actual the, 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 the locations and the instruction on how we're going to address this. So we were successful at uh, identifying six areas. Kirsten successfully identified, a, you know, provided a crew uh, of staff with barriers to employment working full time. So. Not only that, they were able to provide uh, a path for them. And, uh, and Kirsten will in, inform you a little bit more on that, but uh, it, it's great what they've done, providing driver's license and birth certificates and things like that so they can actually be employed and go forward. Um, with this program, and it continues till to today, it accounted for over 10 tons of litter and counting uh, of debris collected yearly from our local waterways and right-of-ways. Uh, and trash that could impact the cleanliness of our watersheds. They've been recognized by both the residents uh, and local government for their work in providing a clean area for citizens to enjoy. Here's a picture of, of that group and they, they're actually still continuous till to, to this date and they take great pride in what they do. Um, Just to kind of uh, rehash on, on how this occurred, whenever we were approached with this, this is the approach that we took. This is an example of a picture of Lake Como here, which is, which is an area that, are, that, that is frequently used by the residents of the Como area, that we had a significant problem with a lot of trash and debris entering into, into that lake. So if you look at the area map, each one of these, area, each one of these squares, uh, pretty much identifies a stormwater inlet. Our approach was if we were to, to send crews out and actually clean these areas proactively throughout here, we would eliminate the majority of the trash and debris and floatables that would enter into those stormwater inlets well, that would e eventually wind up in Lake Como and these other six areas that look the same. So we targeted these areas, not only, not only just the lake itself, but its perimeters to, to prevent trash from entering to those inlets that will eventually affect the, this, this lake. And the results have been phenomenal. Uh, they really have done a great job. They've been well recognized with the, the residents within that area and very thankful of what they've done and what they've accomplished. And they've done the same for the other five. Uh, and and uh, in, in, other, in other areas, we've kind of expanded also. So they've done a great job. They take their job very seriously and I'm very proud of what they've done. This is an example, a prime example. This watershed here leads into one, uh, one of our uh, mo most widely used lakes, which is Lake Arlington. Lake Arlington serves the community both in Fort Worth and Arlington. We received a complaint in this area, this local watershed, where a lot of the residents within that area used as a, a fishing spot. That week, we received a lot of rain, and we received a complaint of the abundance of trash in that area. So my group went out to inspect, and it was this is not this is not everything. It's it's quite a bit more. So I went out to Kirsten and I called the group to come in and I'm not sure if they were gonna be able to tackle it, uh, tackle it all. But between the four, within two days, they actually cleaned this whole area and its surrounding areas. As you can see here, the before and after of just this one area, that four people were able to, to, to accomplish. 
through their throughout that those two days, they received visits from the Texas Commission of Environmental Quality, also Tarrant Regional Water District, and complimented them. And they were in awe of what they were able to accomplish just with a team of four, and also recognized for the local residents for what they've done. So this kind of gives you a great idea of the seriousness and the uh, of, of what they do, and and the uh, you know just how they feel about their job. At this point in time, I want to transition to, to, to Kirsten. She has, uh, you know, she wants to inform you of, of what, uh, elaborate a lot more on up the Upspire group and their path and their success and what they're, they've been doing and what they, they, their, their plan is for the future. Kirsten, if you just take it over and we'll go from there. Thank you so much. Thanks, Phil. Uh, well, to start, I just to start, I just wanted to to talk about our parent agency. Um, Neil mentioned it a few times. Presbyterian Night Shelter um, is our 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 parent agency. It's a large local nonprofit. Um, Neil, if you'd go to the next slide. So, Presbyterian Night Shelter is. Uh, the largest homeless service provider in all of North Texas. Um, we have the capacity to serve over a thousand individuals a day um, and house uh, about 700 guests in our overnight shelters on any given night. Um, our mission is to guide the journey from homeless to home. And um, we also have a day resource center called True Worth Place. Uh, True Worth Place is a um, building where anyone can come um, during the day, it's open seven days a week and receive emergency services such as um, showers, food, uh, mail, but we also offer case management, diversion services, um, and then some fun things like classes, uh, emergency documents to uh, help, you know, recovering uh, social security cards, birth certificates. Um, so that's, that's our, our third uh, brand, if you will. And then there's also Upspire. Um, so on the next slide, we have some numbers from our, our 2020 uh, year. Despite all the challenges that, that 2020 threw at us that I'm, I'm sure everyone's experienced in their own way, um, we were able to move 14, um, 1,414 individuals out of homelessness across our various programs. Um, we were able to serve over 3,000 unique individuals, um, see 6,000 people through True Worth Place, and then in Upspire, we were able to um, move 89 people out of uh, homelessness thanks to their income and employment, or 52, I'm sorry. And we were able to graduate 102 into higher paying jobs. And so even though 2020 was a hard year, we were very proud of our work. And um, as you can see, Presbyterian Night Shelter as an agency is rather large. Um, so one of the questions that I frequently get is how did Upspire um, come to be and why did we decide to, to launch it? So in 2015, um, our leadership decided to not only kind of manage homelessness by moving people out of the system, but try to address one of the root causes. Um, so our guests have identified for years now that the, the, num the leading reason that they become homeless and then are not able to exit homelessness is lack of income and opportunity. And so seeing those numbers and, and really looking at, at why people were becoming homeless in Tarrant County, Presbyterian Night Shelter decided to launch a social enterprise, which we defined as a mission-driven business. Um, so on the next slide, we have our definition of social enterprise. Um, so social enterprises are mission-driven businesses that directly impact hard to employ individuals by providing job training and employment opportunities. So our mission as a social enterprise is equitably as important as our profit. Um, so the profit allows us to be sustainable, right? So we, we kind of control our own growth, um, determine where our resources for, for training um, and employment opportunities are, are allocated to. We're not as dependent on donors because we operate as a business. So I hold contracts like the contract with the city of Fort Worth um, and I operate as any other service provider would um, I just have to also answer to our mission, really work on, on serving our employees, making sure that we're, we're meeting their needs and providing all the resources that they need to be successful. 
not only to move out of homelessness, but hopefully re-enter the general workforce um, and graduate onto a higher paying job after um, employment with us. So we're um, mission driven, as I said, um, and on the next slide, we have our mission, vision, and what we believe. These are foundational, just words to what Upspire is. So we create jobs that empower people to have their own home. Um, and our vision is that anyone who comes to Presbyterian Night Shelter that needs employment or you know is just going through a hard time is able to access not only the resources of our parent company, but of Upspire um, and find supportive employment and people who believe in them and, and can help them you know, achieve whatever goal they, they would like um, to, to achieve. And so to, to do that, um, we operate four businesses, four business line items. Or, and so as Neil was talking about, litter abatement is one of our four businesses. We also do landscaping with the city of Fort Worth as well as commercial staffing. Um, some of our staffing partners are waste management, um, a local pipe and heat treating company. And then we also have commercial janitorial um, where we go out in our community and clean the offices um, of businesses, local nonprofits, some churches. And so across the board, we have um, 35 customers. We have 125 um, positions available to enterprise staff. And we are definitely looking at continuing to grow um, so we're looking at things uh, like skilled trades, um, possibly an a, a enterprise located on our campus that's more like warehouse fulfillment type. So um, we're, we're still looking at expanding, but those are our four established businesses as of now. And so our current status um, is that with an initial gift of $50,000 that was given to us during a capital campaign in 2015, we were able to launch Upspire in 2016. And since then, we've been able to build um, a three and a half million dollar enterprise with 125 permanent positions. Um, we've removed over uh, 2,500 tons of litter from our city streets and moved 175 individuals out of homelessness. So we're very proud of the success, um, but we, we're excited to see you know, what, what we can continue to do and, and grow too. So the City of Fort Worth partnership has been instrumental to, to our success and, and to, the, to the company that we are today. Um, so we, up, the city of Fort Worth contract was our second um, contract. It wasn't our first, but it was the most important in the sense that not only did it launch our litter abatement business, but it really lended Upspire uh, legitimacy when we were very young and new. So, a huge part of, of our success here is that with the city of Fort Worth as a partner and with us as a vendor, we were able to not only prove our model and, and show people in the community that this was a legitimate business, we did have an important purpose, but that we were able to achieve um, if market, we were able to, to perform at market standards and achieve some, some pretty impressive numbers. And so um, working with, with Neil and his crew, um, we were able to realize a 264% increase in the citywide miles that were uh, cleaned. We were able to remove over 70 tons of, of litter a month. Um, and then the donor crew that Neil was talking about is also able to add to that number and um, remove about 3.2 tons a year of litter out of our waterways, um, which these are huge numbers. And this really helped us um, just kind of prove our business model. Um, the city of Fort Worth obviously has some has some recognition, some brand recognition in the community. So if we can be successful with them, it, it gives our, our customers um, encouragement that we'll be successful with, you know, with, with what their business needs as well. And so um, this partnership also just really caught the attention of, of local media. And so there was a local news story, I think, Neil, I think that was 2017, um, but it was picked up by the by the national media, um, and we received a lot of attention. I know Neil's phone was ringing off the hook, and, and so was mine. And um, we actually got some inquiries from other other countries. Uh, it, it, it caught it just really caught on with social media and, and really told a great story um, and recognized the hard work of of the Upspire employees, which at the time we, our brand was Clean Slate. Um, but but Neil's crew as well, and just 
the commitment of the city of Fort Worth to find a unique way to not only clean our city, but support its own citizens that had fallen on hard times. And so um, this was a huge boost to our program. It, it I think, is why we, we still receive calls to this day about our partnership and how we've been able to structure it. And so looking to today, um, we have, you know, we continue to just really work on local awareness, community engagement, education. Those are huge parts of of you know litter abatement and, and trying to keep our city clean. Um, we are working with our, our uh, environmental department and the waterways donor who still supports that, that waterways crew that Neil was discussing to start trialing litter traps in our waterways. We really want to be more efficient and effective um, in, in cleaning our waterways and watersheds. And so this year, um, the city is sponsoring two litter traps uh, in, in our local watersheds. And then we are also approaching some donors to purchase some more litter traps that we will put um, in different watersheds strategically in the community to hopefully you know, catch all the litter that runs into the streets and down into our drainage pipes during rain events. And our goal is to prevent it from getting to the Trinity River, um, which is our local river. So we're excited about that. We're excited to see its impacts. Um, and then, you know, just as a whole, um, social enterprise can have such a, a large impact, not only on the employees who work for us and are able to receive you know, the wages and the benefits and the, the transportation and case management that they need, um, but it really does impact our community as a whole and local taxpayers. So using our 2020 numbers, um, you know, if you wanna to go to the next slide, there was this great uh, research that was done and, and posted uh, by a uh, organization called REDF, R-E-D-F. Um, they are based in uh, San Francisco, uh, but they really wanted to study and, and support, you know, the, the growth of, of social enterprise and why it's important to local communities. So for every $1 that a social enterprise like Upspire spends, $2.23 in benefits is returned to society $1.31 of which is direct saving to taxpayers. So this is huge. Um, so just, just looking at 2020, which again was a hard year, um, we were able to, to avoid layoffs, thankfully with the support of our customers. And we, we paid 2.12 million um, in wages to our enterprise staff. And that returned 4.7 million in benefits to society, 2.7 million of which was direct savings to our taxpayers. And so, by, by using our model and with the city supporting an organization like Upspire, they are, are being very good stewards of taxpayer dollars. And they're investing in a, in, a, in a program and a company that not only you know, achieves what we need to achieve as a city government, which is cleaning the city, um, but it, it generates savings, moves people out of homelessness. It gives them a job. Um, and so we're really proud of this partnership. We think its impacts to you know, to our community, to the city of Fort Worth is huge. Um, we're happy to answer any questions that y'all might have about, you know, how, how this started and, and what's, what's coming um, in the future. But yeah, thank you guys for, for listening to Neil and I, and we look forward to answering your questions. Uh, Neil and Kirsten, if y'all will, I know y'all have been um, answering questions from the question tab. Um, thank you for that. If, if um, anyone has questions, you can kind of look at that as well. And then there should be some coming from the chat. Let me know if y'all need help with that.
Neil or Kirsten, is there anything that y'all want to talk about um, in advance or anything that y'all want to address that y'all might be getting more questions from? Well, I, I would say, um, you know, as far as, well, first of all, thank you. I've seen some comments on the chat and as far as response to the program, um, and we really appreciate it. Um, you know, we've been getting great, great responses as far as what we've started here uh, and great, uh, I guess, success. And I, I did see some inquiries um, as far as, you know, uh, how, as far as, um, how would they implement this in their own cities or, or uh, questions? Um, Chris and I, have, you know, we're, we're open to the range of time as far as any communication that you would like to maybe talk with us or, or chat with us as far as emails or, you know, I'm, I'm even open to direct calls if, if, if arranged. Um, so uh, feel free to utilize the uh, our emails or direct information to contact us um, uh, in a range of meeting or, or what have you. We, we're, we're very open uh, to discussing or, or, or getting you uh, any information to kind of help you organize the same type of programs within your city or organization. A few questions on here. I'm not sure if y'all have um, answered some of these. I know y'all have answered a lot. Um, one recently, two minutes ago, for homeless workers, um, our service, oh, where'd you go? Let's see. How does Aspire help address some of the challenges in employing individuals experiencing homelessness? The life circumstances of the individuals themselves, like working with a physical job, maybe without access to healthy food, as well as things like documentation and bank accounts to set up without addresses? That's a great question. Um, so we, so Presbyterian Night Shelter as a whole is a very large organization um, and they have a lot of community partners and resources um, that we utilize to help people um, experiencing homelessness gain employment. So as um, there were a couple different things that you asked in that question, but for documentation, people missing their critical documents, our recruiter um, works with the local community partner prior to someone gaining employment with Upspire to get those critical resources. There are two forms of ID um, and or a passport. And so we help with that on the front end. And then while they're employees of Upspire, regardless of whether or not they're currently or previously experienced homelessness or, or maybe never experienced homelessness, we, we offer what we call job aids and so we have free transportation to and from the job site each day. Um, we provide food, um, we provide uniforms, kind of basic necessities. So we do do what we can while individuals are employed with us um, in order to remove some of those barriers. And then I also saw some questions around housing. Um, Presbyterian Night Shelter has the capacity for over 700 individuals to stay um, on our campus each night. And um, a lot of our employees who are currently experiencing homelessness do stay at Presbyterian Night Shelter. They do not have to, that is not a requirement, um, but we do have an Upspire specific dorm um, in both our men's and women's shelter. And um, we do what we can just to kind of help um, with their comings and goings based on their work schedule, make sure that they have meals when they return, um, access to showers, all of that. And our, they, we also have a very strong case management program and normally um, an Upspire employee who receives a paycheck can move out within 30 days. Joe, unfortunately, we do not have any affiliate in Houston. I'm from Houston originally. We'd love to get there, but we we do not as of as of now. And then Daniel, I, you asked a question that we help hard to employ people experiencing homelessness. Um, yes, we can help people that are not currently experiencing homelessness, um, but possibly have other barriers to employment, um, like the 
criminal history. That's a that's a large population that we help. So we do open interviews Monday through Friday at True Worth Place, um, and anyone's welcome to come in and meet with our recruiter, um, or they can reach out to her directly. You can find her information um, on our social media, and she can set up a one-on-one -on -one interview. Neil, I don't know if you want to jump in on Priscilla's question with the smaller cities in DFW. Upspire has the capacity to go beyond Fort Worth, um, but this contract specifically is with the city of Fort Worth. Let's see. Um, and then, Bashil, um, you asked how can you can we explain how the donor workers get paid? So the donor um, workers are still W two employees full time. They're just assigned to that crew. Honestly, our employees don't really know the difference between our donor sponsored crew and our city of Fort Worth crew. They all consider themselves um, city litter crews, and so that's just how we handle the funding on our side. The donor and um, Upspire have an MOU that states the scope of work that that we commit to doing and how many individuals we commit to employ. And then um, that donation is made to Upspire and then we, we just pay the wages and the insurance and all the benefits um, exactly like we, we pay the other crews. And then Dan, you're, you're, you asked what would we suggest um, for a city to do to take the first steps to start a program? Um, I would just evaluate all of your local service providers and see if you do have a nonprofit interested in starting a social enterprise or maybe that has the resources and capabilities to do this. Um, and then this might be a better conversation for us to have offline. Um, like Neil said, we're willing to, to meet with people and talk through it. Um, but we definitely couldn't have got, gotten this up and running without um, the support of code compliance, city council. Um, so it did take a lot of people involved at both the city level and Presbyterian Night Shelter. But um, hopefully our experience can help, you know, kind of put those those things in place if, if you'd like to reach out more. And yes, as, as Kirsten said, with, with this, it's, it's just also also identifying a need within your your local community um, mm -hmm. um, and with your your i guess the city in which you live any government entity so it's com conversation conversation with those groups such as like kirsten said we're a part of code compliance identifying a need that's there reaching out to those those uh, those entities or, or, or your city to find out what's available and just starting that that conversation um um, and seeing where you can fit in, whether it's litter, um, and Kirsten, Kirsten and her group have, have done a great job in exploring other areas outside, like janitorial services and things like that. So if you can identify a need, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, and I know Kirsten can can say we've we've come a long way, and uh, we we talk about this within you know all the success stories and things like that, but understand just to be honest, it it. The beginning process is a, is a challenge, um, and it, it takes hard work, patience, um, uh, and a good core group of people to make it work. It takes a while, so even though we all have the good feeling, you know, and, and we see all the success and things like that, it's still we, we still face challenges. But at the beginning, it, it it really is. It takes some patience, some work, and a good group of people around you. I I, I have we have good internal. Also, we have a great relationship with, with Kirsch and her group and working together to make things work. So we understand the importance of it. And also at this time, we're, we're actually expanding. We're looking to expand it, as Kirsten said before, it's, it's, it's growing. So, so just understand that it, it's identifying the need, creating a communication, putting, in, putting together a great model 
as you can see with Kirsten's part of the presentation, there's a lot of work, a lot of uh, just a, a, a lot that goes into it. So just um, uh, start in identifying the need, create communi communication with your local leaders and your local groups and and understand that it's a challenge. It's a it's a it's it's steps that that needs to and we're, we're here. We've, we've been available. We've been speaking on this for quite a while and meeting with other cities and so we're here for reference, you know, anything or any questions or help you in any way possible. Definitely. Uh, Zena, I see you asked about the budget. Um, I believe it's, there's your stories. I believe it's exactly 376,000. Um, then we also have a smaller contract as well. Where we pick up uh, East Lancaster Corridor, which is an additional 50. Um, and then Claudia, you asked who provides the equipment and tools needed to get the work done. As a vendor in the RFP, that burden falls to Upspire. Um, however, like Neil said, this is a partnership. And I know for a fact that our guys have broken some of their litter pickers out while on route. And Ronnie, um, who works with Neil, has been kind enough to, to lend one. So very much a partnership. But yes, we provide the bags and the litter pickers, the vehicles, the trailers. All of that is purchased by Upspire. Um, but the city does allow our crews to access the city um, l landfills and recycling centers, which is huge. So we do not dispose of this trash on our campus. And then uh, Reverend Dr. Terry, I believe our emails are on our profiles, but if not, my email is kham at journeyhome.org. And I will include mine on, on the questionnaire, just in case you, you don't, uh, it's not available, so. Place them in the chat for them to copy and save, but if they click on your profile, on your picture, um, anywhere they see it, you know, on, on the beginning of the presentation, they should, your email should be able to be linked and popped up. Okay. We still have a few minutes, so if anyone has any questions, I think I see some more come in. What's the hourly rate? Does the city pay in part of the So the city, um, the city does not pay any of the wages directly. All, I bill the city as a vendor once a month after the work's been completed, and then um, we have a 30-day net payment term, and then we handle the payroll and everything um, as a regular service provider would. Upspire's starting salaries range everywhere from 8 to 15, um, and that's across the city contracts because we also do landscaping. So it just depends on the experience and the um, position, but yeah, 8, 8 to 15. And then we also provide and pay for all of the, the benefits. Um, like I said, PTO workers' comp, health insurance, we subsidize about 75% of the health insurance costs so that it's affordable to our workers. Um, just just kind of do what we can to alleviate those burdens. Eligibility um, for employment. So all of our employees have to pass a drug screen and background check and you know complete the interview process. We are background friendly. Um, there are only a few charges that we can't employ. That would be a sex offense, murder, uh, manslaughter, and um, animal cruelty. Those are those are our no goes, which is set by workers' comp. Um, that varies state by state. This is just how Texas works. And so, um, but yeah, just pass a drug screen, background check, and then complete the onboarding and safety training. And then we partner new employees with a veteran employee wherever wherever they end up whatever crew they end up on and we start work
If you have any more questions, please feel free to um, place them on here for a few more minutes or reach out directly to them. Remember that, you know, from wherever you're coming from, you know, these are things that you can share. These are things that you can do within your city um, or try to implement within your city. Um, if you are a neighborhood association or HOA, please remember that these are your local um, people that, you, you know, if you want to have a speaker or anything, just remember that our office also does this and is able to connect you. So um, use this, share it, um, use it at your next meeting. If it's something that you, um, you know, want to share with your, with your membership. It's something um, that we can all kind of <laughs> learn about, you know, even us in community engagement, we work with almost every department. And sometimes, you know, we're, we're learning this stuff too firsthand in order to share. So um, use it to your advantage. And if there are no more questions, we're going to have one more minute worth of questions. Please remember to, um, once we are done, and stop the stream, just go that very top right um, arrow that says back to lobby, that will take you back and the next session starts at 1115. Thank you so much, Neil and Kirsten. This was amazing. Um, it was great, you know, listening and, and all of that. I think there is one, would it be possible to see the scope of the landscape responsibilities included? Uh Mindy, if you'd like to email me, yes, it's however, just so you know, our landscaping is um, both under parks and rec and code compliance, and it is truly um, private mo. So like when, when, um, you know, houses, lawns get overgrown, and then right of ways and like on city owned streets and sidewalks. So it is very much just um, regular city landscaping, if you will. All right. Well, once again, thank y'all for joining us. Please reach out to them. You can click on their picture and their information will pop up or they do have it on the chat. Please remember that this will be available starting next week. Um, so once you um, get back to it, you'll be able to start seeing these um, pop back up and kind of play um, at your own pace. And those will be available until August. So thank y'all so much for joining Kirsten and Neil. Thank y'all so much again for being on here and we'll see y'all next time. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you all. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye.